Yo, what's going on everybody? It's Jonathan and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the infamous OnePlus 2. You see, I finally got my hands on an invite and I finally was able to get a hold of that phone and with all the coverage that I brought you guys with the OnePlus 1, I felt it was only natural to give you guys coverage of the OnePlus 2 and I'm happy I chose to do so. So let's go ahead and start with the unboxing of the OnePlus 2. Right off the bat, you can see the packaging is different than the OnePlus One. Instead of that over-the-top packaging, you're getting more of a standard smartphone box, and there's nothing wrong with that. Now inside the box, you're going to find the OnePlus Two sitting right there on top. Go ahead and set that to the side, and then underneath that, you're going to find some health safety warranty information and just your basic user guide. So underneath all that paperwork, you're going to find your wall wart, which is done in white, and it has the OnePlus logo sitting right on top. And then finally, you have the flat, tangle-free design, USB Type-C to standard USB data sync and charging cable, and it also has some cable management features on it. As you can see, it has a little built-in strap. Now, the USB Type-C connector, as you can see, comes with a little piece of plastic covering it, just a little protection that they give you upon shipping, and it is reversible, so you can plug this in any direction on your OnePlus 2. So it's kind of like the lightning cable on the iPhone. So we'll go ahead and do a quick tour around the device to showcase all the buttons and ports. And starting with the bottom, you can see you have dual mono speakers and then your USB Type-C port. But keep in mind, this is still USB 2.0, so you're not going to get fast charging and syncing speeds. So on the left-hand side of the phone, you're going to find your alert switch. And it's similar to the alert switch found on the iPhone, except instead of two clicks, it gives you three. All the way on the bottom gives you all notifications. In the middle, it's priority only. And then if you switch it all the way up to the top, it turns off all notifications. So on the right hand side, you're going to find your power button and your volume rocker. And I can just go ahead and tell you off first impressions, they're not as tactile as I was hoping. Sometimes when I press the power button, I tend to hold it down too long. And then of course that menu comes up. Switching things over to the top of the phone, you're going to find your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, a little antenna line, and then of course a microphone. So on the back of the OnePlus 2, you're going to find the new and improved 13 megapixel camera with optical image stabilization. It has a better sensor, allowing for more light to pass through with larger pixels. It also has an aperture f2.0, and I definitely plan on testing this thing out for my full review. Now on the back side, you're also going to find dual tone flash, as well as laser autofocus, which I will be testing out to see if it's as good as the LG G3 or the G4. Also on the back side of the OnePlus 2, you're going to find that sandstone material with the OnePlus logo right there in the center, and it still feels just as good as the OnePlus 1 did. Now I can just go ahead and tell you the OnePlus 2 feels a lot more solid than the OnePlus 1 ever did. That metal on the sides gives it that extra premium push to let you know you're holding a very well-crafted phone. It has a smaller footprint, it has that nice curvature to fit your hand good, and overall I can't say nothing bad about the design of the OnePlus 2. It has a little bit more weight to it, making you think that it's a little bit more durable even. So one thing OnePlus did correctly is release the style swap covers with the OnePlus 2. So whenever you get an invite for that phone, you can go ahead and pick up one of these covers and slap it on the back of your phone, giving it a little bit more of a unique feel to it. I picked up the Kevlar and I also picked up the Black Apricot. Now I can just go ahead and tell you that the Black Apricot is my favorite. The Kevlar does not look bad, but it's not real Kevlar and it kind of threw me off. All it is is a piece of plastic with the Kevlar material on it. And I don't even think the Black Apricot is made of real wood. It's just plastic with the wood print on it, but it feels really good in the hand still. The Black Apricot kind of has like a paper feel to it, while the Kevlar is just like smooth plastic. Now the style swap covers are relatively cheap, coming in at about 27 bucks, and it just gives you that extra edge to customize your OnePlus 2 and make it a little bit better to your liking. So as far as the internals goes of this phone, you're looking at the Snapdragon 810 processor, which has been underclocked to 1.8 gigahertz to reduce the overheating issue. It's still octa-core and it's still 64-bit. As far as the GPU is concerned, you have the Adreno 430. You have four gigabytes of RAM if you get the 64 gigabyte version of the OnePlus 2, and it packs a 3300 milliamp hour battery. Now with a battery like that, you would think that you would get really good battery life. However, my two days of use, it hasn't been that great. But I still have a lot more testing to do, and I'm going to hold my thoughts until my final review. As far as the front of the phone goes, you're looking at your dedicated sensors at the top, an LED notification light, which can be customized to a different color if you want to, and you also have your new and improved 5 megapixel camera on the front. Shifting things on down, you have that beautiful 1080p 5.5 inch IPS LCD display, which is good for a PPI of 401. Coming straight out of the box, this display is gorgeous. It's very sharp, has great color reproduction, it has excellent viewing angles, but I still have a lot of testing to do. 
I want to see how accurate the colors are, as well as how good outdoor visibility is. Now on the bottom of that display, you're going to find two physical capacitive buttons, which are little lines. They can be customized in the software, which I'll show you in just a minute. In between those physical capacitive buttons, you're going to find a physical home button, which is actually a fingerprint scanner as well. And I'll show you how well it performs in my full review, but I'll touch base on it a little bit in this video in just a minute. Now some of the downsides about the OnePlus 2 are A, it doesn't have an SD card slot, which is okay, the OnePlus 1 didn't, but it also doesn't have NFC or quick charge. And that's kind of a bummer because it's not taking advantage of USB type C and it's also not going to be able to take advantage of Android Pay. As far as software goes, you're looking at Android 5.1.1 Lollipop with Oxygen OS on top of it and it runs great and it pretty much looks like stock Android. Now once you go into the settings portion of the phone, you realize, hey, it's not stock Android. It's full of different settings for customization. You can customize those physical capacitive buttons to pretty much do whatever you want, whether you hold it down or double press them. For example, I have my home button set up to where if I double press the home button, it launches the camera just like it would on the Galaxy S6. You can customize the LED notification light as well as the look of your phone a little bit. You could turn it on dark mode and then turn your highlight colors to a different color if you choose to do so. I'm still digging around and playing with certain features and settings, so mind me if I don't cover them all in this video, which I probably won't, but I will include my favorite ones in the full review as this is just my first impressions video. Now unlike the Google Now launcher, even though this kind of resembles it a lot, when you swipe to the right, instead of having Google Now, you have your most recent apps and then you also have your most recent contacts. And you can also add different widgets here. Personally, I'd rather have Google Now there, but it's not too bad, I guess. Now, as far as giving you my opinion and my thoughts on how well the software runs, I haven't used it long enough, but I have noticed several issues. For instance, when backing out of an app or just transitioning to another app, I've noticed there is a lot of lag. Also, whenever you use that home button, which is not technically a physical home button, because you don't press anything down, you just kind of set your thumb on it, there is quite a bit of lag. Like you could press it and then maybe a second later, that's when it will take you to your homepage. There's just a little bit of a delay similar to what the OnePlus One had before they updated it and fixed it. Now, another issue, of course, is a known issue. A lot of the reviewers are talking about it is with the fingerprint scanner. It doesn't always work, especially depending on what angle you have your thumb at or whatever finger that you're using. You can see here that it didn't register the first couple times and then boom, it unlocked it. The easiest way I found to unlock your phone with the fingerprint scanner is not to turn it on and then scan your fingerprint, is just set your thumb on the home button and let it unlock and register your fingerprint all at the same time. Now of course you have your motion gestures which are a carryover from the OnePlus One, such as drawing a circle to launch the camera, a V for the flashlight, you can double tap to turn on the display, and you also have music controls. Now the only overheating I've experienced on the phone so far, and I really haven't tested out gaming or anything like that, is just when downloading apps. Whenever I was just pretty much restoring my phone, even though it wasn't from a backup, I was just downloading all the apps that I use, it did get significantly hot, such as updating Google services and things like that. Make sure you guys stay tuned so you don't miss my full review, which should be coming up in the upcoming weeks. I'm really looking forward to testing out this phone and bringing you guys an in-depth full review of the OnePlus 2. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss that. Go ahead and follow me on all my social media connections so that way if you have any questions about this phone, you can get at me more directly and I will get back to you a lot more quickly. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and of course I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.